the Mahari project. <laughs> a couple of years back, just before I started this channel, I fixed up a Citroen Mahari. It was a green one. It was not a four-seater like this is. Well, it's nothing at the moment, but it's going to be a four-seater. The one that I had last time was a two-seater. This is a bit more usable, I think. The green one was a bit better looking than this. I, and I'm talking about the patina of the green one. It was completely perfect. I will show you a couple of pictures of that. I fixed that one up, fixed the engine, uh, changed the chassis for a galvanized one, fixed up the entire tubular space frame uh, contraption that holds all the plastic bits by using my pipe bender. I bought the pipe bender for that exact project, project and I haven't used it since pretty much and then got it MOT'd and all that. So this is going to be pretty much the same drill. The space frame on this one is a bit worse. It's going to be a bit difficult to actually recreate it because on the old one I just changed a pipe at a time, but this one has collapsed in the area. So I'll have to take some measurements and try to be a little bit precise, which is not one of my finest abilities. I gotta be honest, I'm not good at measuring and making sure stuff is in alignment and so on. It's a weak point. But what I would like to do today is to remove the engine hopefully remove some of the space frame and then assess the chassis itself because the weak point on the Citroen A models are the, the chassis. It's not really weak, but they are old, they rust. And yeah, it is not uncommon that these break on the middle up here and then just... <laughs> I know people who have experienced that and of course it's not a very fun thing. My first plan was to change the chassis for a galvanized one like I did last time. It's around a thousand euros for, for a new one. I know it will escalate a lot from there because taking the old parts off and moving it to the new chassis is, is quite difficult. No, it's not difficult, but there's a huge chance that you damage something and you have to buy some new stuff. So it's a bit, so it, it is more expensive than just a thousand euros. At the moment, I have a lot of projects going on and I'm not really making any money, but what I do have is a lot of time. Therefore, I will try to fix as much as possible using my hands instead of just buying new stuff. I like that kind of thing, by the way. And I did not pick up this car. This car got delivered by the previous owner. He uh, put it all on a, uh, on a trailer and then, uh, drove, and then drove to me, which was pretty impressive because a Mahari in pieces is a lot of really light pieces and he didn't drop anything, so impressive. But what I noticed straight away when he was gone was that stuff is taken off the engine. There is no, um, there's no heater box manifold thingy here. It's in a box over there, but it's removed. A lot of other stuff is removed. And then I noticed this. Yeah, as you can see, the engine is not even attached to the chassis at the moment. It's just loosely put on top. You can see the drive shaft is off, off as well. So someone has been taking the engine off and then just put it back on. The guy I bought it from bought it like this. I don't even think he knew that the engine was loose. I'm not sure. I think if he knew, he would have most, he most likely would have strapped the engine together to the chassis under transport because it's, it's not really loose, but it could wiggle loose. But, but it has been like this for at least 15 years. So, um, Someone has most likely started the restoration and then just didn't want to or didn't have time or yeah, there could be a lot of reasons. So removing this engine could be pretty easy. Everything seems to be loose, but the brake line right here seems to be wanting to tangle up together with the chassis and all that. So I'm just going to cut it because it's going to be changed anyway. I'm going to take the wire loom apart right here. This goes to the rear for all the lighting. On a Citroen 2CV and other A models, it's a bit annoying that all wires used, pretty much, at least for the lighting, is green wires. <laughs> the connectors are color coded, but very often they are gone and replaced with something else. And as you can see, this is gray and then goes into a green one. So if the red ones are disappeared, then can be a bit. But on the other hand, this is really simple. And you don't almost don't even need a multimeter to figure out how it goes because you can just follow the wires to the lamps. 
So I have most likely forgotten something, but I'm just gonna gently try to lift it out. It is stuck in something back there. I think it's just catching on the, on the engine mount. Brake cable is not disconnected. <laughs> that could make it difficult. So the handbrake cable is also going to be cut because I can already now see that it is completely rusted on the outer sheet and it will bind. I'm not going to put it back without replacing it because it's so difficult to replace once it's there. I'm not going to take that chance. I'm going to cut it. So let's give it another shot at removing this engine. Like that. It's coming. Slowly. But steady. And then just, oh, there's still something snacking there. Oh, it's just a clutch cable. It will come along. Almost smooth as silk. And it's not that heavy. Being two at this job would be a very good idea. Using your engine hoist is also a very good idea, but it's doable alone. If you know me, you know that I really love the startup of engines that have be, has been standing for a lot of years. And I cannot wait to try to start this one up. But I'm gonna just wait until I fix everything else up just to keep me motivated a bit. And also because it's a lot easier to just start it up in the right position, in my opinion. But I will most likely do a check over video on it in a later episode, getting all the oil out, checking the valves and all that. And the good thing about this one, it's not stuck. I haven't turned it more than that because I think we could have some rust scales in the intake or something like that. So we'll check that over. But we won't do anything else on the engine in this video. See you later. But one thing, if you don't know these engines, I, some of you um, might never seen one of these or even know anything about Citroëns. But take a look at this little clever design. Um, it got some features that are copied by, I'm not sure it's copied, but Alfa Romeo also used it. I think even Maserati used it. Inboard brake. Uh, drums in this instance later on becomes real discs and calibers in here but all the way in here at the gearbox side not at the wheel side then you have two cylinders boxer engine it's an air cooled boxer do it like that um, one on each side and then the gearbox the starter on top and yeah it's just a really clever little light and a quite efficient package i think I think the maximum output is around 32 horsepower on these engines. I think this is a 28 or something like that. I'm not sure, but it's around that mark. And it's pretty impressive from a 602 cubic engine. And now the exhaust manifold should be loose. 
Oh, there's a bolt. I'm not going to remove the drive shafts just yet because I will need to have need to have the tires off for that. But they will need to come off to be cleaned up because they are full of crap in there. Yeah, <laughs> it's. It seems silly to talk about that now because there's a lot of other work. Up here is what holds the dash and the windscreen. This is supposed to be fitted like this, but has been cut. Right there and right there. And also the windscreen has been stuck in there because it's aluminum going into steel, which is a bad idea. So it has been cut there and also on the other side. So there's a lot of fixing to be done on that. I gotta say that already now I'm pretty optimistic about the, the, it's not called a chassis, I know it's called a chassis. I just have a hard time pronouncing that for some reason, chassis. But already I can see now that it seems to be in pretty good condition and it was exactly the same when I did one last time. I was extremely optimistic and then suddenly I realized that it was completely rotten and I had to change it. But this one is at least better than that so far because there's no holes so it seems in here and everything actually looks rather good and there are even some factory paint still on this so this one over here is a bit rotten but it's just a cover plate i'm looking forward to look inside of here because that was where the old one was rotten but at the moment i'm just going to keep on removing balls so i can take off all the space framing and then i'm going to pressure wash this this should have been done a couple of days back, but uh, I'm just going to give it some WD-40 on all the bolts. Taking all the crap off beforehand is a good idea, otherwise it won't work. And again, it just looks really nice when you get all the grime away. The bolt is not even rusty. I, <laughs> I really didn't expect that. I, think it's just... I can remember having to cut all these hardwares when I did this previously on, on the green one. This can even be reused. Amazing. This is turning out to be a lot easier than I thought. I was pretty sure that this was going to be with a angle grinder, but so far so good. And then on the rear on the front part of the frame are two bolts, one there and one on the other side. And I actually think that is all that connects the front part of the frame to the chassis. And then it's connected with a bar in between them that we can just bolt, which we can just unbolt. Let's see if that one comes loose. <laughs> this is not normal on cars from my parts of the world and not normal in my experience on a Citroen, but these balls even look new. There's factory paint visible underneath the uh, washer. I'm puzzled about the fact that the space frame is this badly rusty comparing to, to the rest that I have seen so far. Hmm. It co it's coming loose. I was pretty sure that it was going to snap because I just snapped it on the other side, but I forgot to turn the camera so you didn't see it. But uh, that is the only bolt that has snapped so far is this one on the other side. And look at it, it's a 11 millimeter bolt and it's really in the middle of the, uh, the environment there. The wheel will be flinging up a lot of mud in this area when you drive it. So. Uh, I'm not surprised that it snapped on the other side. On the on the other side, I am surprised that this this one didn't though. I can remember these when I restored the other one. This is just a lesson in sim simplistic design because it's just a piece of rubber with a arrow shape in the one one end and a hole in the other, and you just you just put it in and you just stick it in there and it locks. It's clever. I actually collected a lot of them last time and kept them for other stuff. I don't want to snap the rusty part more than I have to because I'm going to use them as templates, I hope. Huh? 
like that. Really easy. <coughs> Broke another one. Tank hot. Does it smell? I have forgotten that my pressure washer is pretty good at washing, but not as, but not so good at pressure. So <laughs> it didn't work very well, but it, it's better than before. So far, I think this is really a long way beyond my expectation. I was expecting to find rusty holes, at least, that needed to be patched. But so far, I haven't even found any of those. It seems to be in good condition, and it really shouldn't be being an old Citroen. But they are known to rust from the inside. So sometimes they look pretty good, but are about, but are about to, to break. So I think the only way to be completely sure is to open it up and take a look at the uh, reinforcements inside to make sure that there are no bad rust in there. I'm not going to do that today, but I am thinking about cutting some kind of inspection hole. I just have to figure out what the best way is to do. Is the best way to take a big piece out or just a small one? I'm not really sure, but uh, this will be all for this. But let me show you a bit up close the condition. I really had some issues with the microphone uh, today and therefore the ending was without sound so I had to re-record -re that now. But it seems as though this, the, the chassis is in, uh, in savable condition. I think there is some rust but there is nothing really bad so far. But I have to inspect it further to know for sure. But um, I think it could be saved and that would be so nice. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Thanks to all my Patreons and uh, see you in the next one.